The following program contains adult themes and some visuals that viewers may find confronting. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm Liz Hayes. I'm Liam Bartlett. I'm Tara Brown. I'm Michael Usher. I'm Alison Langdon. And I'm Charles Wood. Hello and welcome to 60 Minutes. Tonight, the fertility world's dirty little secret. Three little heartbeats, three little lives. But which one do you keep? Oh, God. I couldn't imagine that. The controversial procedure... I leave the healthiest one to live. ...lets mothers choose their lifestyle... Three children at one time would completely derail my life. ...over the lives of their children. Are you selfish for making that decision? A little, yeah. It's the toughest choice any woman could make. You've tried so hard to get pregnant and suddenly you have an instant family. Two, three, even more little lives. A multiple pregnancy. It's either the ultimate gift or a terrible burden. For many women, they have no choice. It would simply be too dangerous to carry all the babies full term. So they turn to a controversial and little known procedure called selective reduction where a doctor decides which fetuses to terminate. In fertility treatment, it's known as the dirty little secret. It's a heartbreaking decision, so it's surprising then that some women actually choose selective reduction for lifestyle reasons. And a warning here, parts of this story are confronting. What you're about to witness is one of the most confronting things you'll see. A doctor's needle is guided carefully into the womb and then into the 11 week old fetus. With pinpoint accuracy, it pierces the tiny heart and potassium chloride is injected. Within seconds, the heartbeat stops. This controversial procedure is euphemistically called selective reduction. From the time I put the needle in, it usually only takes a few seconds for the heartbeat to stop. We then leave the needle in place for at least a minute to make sure that it stays stopped. It's that quick? It's that quick. Dr. Mark Evans is the father of selective reduction. He first developed it in the 80s to reduce the health risks associated with multi-fetal pregnancies which increasingly have become a common but unintended consequence of IVF treatment. And with accuracy you can go straight into the fetus? Yeah. But it's now also being used to customise perfect pregnancies. Very often we would see couples who were on their second marriage. He had two or three from his first marriage, she had two or three from her first marriage. They only wanted to have one more. We also see couples for whom finances are a big issue. They appear to be very selfish decisions. Do you believe that? Actually not. So a woman who comes to you who's conceived triplets naturally and doesn't want all three for lifestyle reasons because it's gonna to be too hard, too expensive, too difficult in a big city, you've got no problem with reducing down to one, to two? No problem at all. Come where I can see you. Selective reduction is known in the fertility world as the dirty little secret. But Amy Richards just saw it as her choice and no one else's. At 34, she became pregnant with triplets. Remarkably, it happened naturally. But Amy knew right away she only wanted to keep one. Cassie emailed to confirm. I was very aware of what I was capable of as a human being, <laughs> um, both in, as, as an individual but in my relationship. And three children at one time um, felt like it would um, completely derail my life. And some women, if they were told they were having triplets, would see it as a miracle, a yeah, blessing. Uh, some women do, yeah. You saw it very differently. Yeah, I did see it differently. So, at 12 weeks, Amy reduced from three to one. That way, she could lower the health risks, have a child, and keep her New York lifestyle. 
you know, I got to maintain my lifestyle and maintain my professional life, and I got to be a very hands-on mother. And um, and it's not to say that I couldn't have done that with triplets. I didn't think I could do that at the time. I know other women who've not made that decision and didn't feel, you know, and who will call me selfish. And Are you selfish for making that decision? A little, yeah. Today, her son is nine and Amy's since had a second child. But even now, she still faces harsh judgments, particularly from other women. The number one response I got from people who didn't know me from strangers was, why didn't I just give those other babies to another family who was trying desperately to have, have a child? It's a fair question. Why didn't it's you? It's not a fair question, because I don't think that it would have been fair to make a choice and say, oh, well, I'm gonna, this one gets to stay with me. And this one gets to, you know, it's, it's, I, I didn't find that a fair scenario. Here in Australia, this procedure is used mostly for medical purposes, but undoubtedly for lifestyle reasons as well. You've got to remember that every person who ends up in this situation has their own story to tell. Melbourne obstetrician Dr Amanda Sampson performs the procedure to reduce the chances of things like preeclampsia, miscarriage and very high rates of cerebral palsy. It's not all flowers, it's not all roses and though you might love your children dearly, um, even when they're disabled, it doesn't mean that it's an easy life or the best life for your normal children. Obviously, the normal children will miss out if there are children with disability who need a lot of extra care over and above the normal children. You want me to push you forever, Rocky? I can't. Canberra mum, Ali Mountfield, had to consider all of this when she discovered she was pregnant with IVF triplets. Her three are today active and happy young kids. But when she was pregnant with them, Ali faced a heartbreaking predicament. The prospect of selective reduction. You think Daddy will come home from Sydney? What was the medical advice to you at the time? When I was taking all this in, he then said, you need to consider um, selective reduction. And it took me a while to compute what that really meant. And Did like, you know what that meant? No, I had never heard of it. Um, my immediate reaction was no, absolutely no way. I've seen how they do it. One of the doctors showed me taking that needle through the womb straight into the heart. It's, um, oh, God. It's a... Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's a horrible thing to think of. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, those heartbeats at seven weeks are just amazing. I couldn't imagine that. Mm. And I have no regrets about our life. And I feel for those who have to choose it. Yeah. Sorry. Has everyone got their gumboots? No, yes. Ali faced exactly the same health risks as anyone carrying triplets, but she remained confident and had a trouble-free pregnancy. Today, Lucy, Hannah and Oscar are perfectly healthy, and while there's no doubt they've turned Ali's world upside down, she can't imagine life without one or two of them. And it is an amazing thing to carry three babies at once um, and to bring home three incredibly healthy and happy children was just a miracle. There you go, you all got an egg? Yeah, my lifestyle changed, I just went, okay, you know, let's make the dining table a two um, change station, let's, you know, put three um, high chairs here, let's go get three cots and just totally embrace the life that we, we've chosen to lead in a way and not exactly chosen to have three at once but that we chose to you know have children and you know as I said it's a great way to do it but you change you adapt yeah <laughs> yeah you do <laughs> pretty radically yeah excellent and down back in America Shelby has a very different story to tell and it resulted in her being labelled a murderer Four years ago, after becoming pregnant with triplets, Shelby terminated two of her three fetuses and kept Chloe. You're such a good dancer. I'm not in the business of risk. That's not how I operate. And I thought, I'm going to lose my pregnancy 
I'm going to die or I'm going to kill somebody else. And that's not right. So my choice was to save my pregnancy and to preserve my own life. But they are worst case scenarios, aren't they? Absolutely, it's worst case scenario. The truth is, Shelby never underwent any tests to find out how healthy or not her fetuses were. She and her husband had turned to artificial insemination to become pregnant, but always knew they wanted only one child. You can see the Dr. Mark Evans was Shelby's doctor. Cross section of the what if all three of Shelby's were completely fine and it just came down to your call? And maybe that was the situation. Could ver that's what we do every day of the week. I, somebody has to make a decision. I leave uh, what I believe is the healthiest one to leave. It's a lot of responsibility for you. That's yep. a fair burden. Yes, it is. So is selective reduction really abortion? The definition of an abortion is to end a pregnancy. Technically, a selective reduction is not an abortion because it's done to preserve a pregnancy. But you are ending life you are ending the potential life of the fetus. I personally don't believe that life in its social context begins until viability. How did you come to that decision to end the life of two of the fetuses that you were carrying? Um, I, I, what's life? I mean, it's, it's... You didn't see those two fetuses as life within you? No. No, it's the potential. That tissue is not a baby until the baby is born. But it is a fact that it's far more than tissue in pregnancy. It is far more than tissue. Not, not to me. Wow! Shelby has no doubt she's made the right decision. Where's the bus? Despite being in the crosshairs of anti-abortion activists. I don't know about you, but um, I like to be a fly in the wall for that little conversation between mother and daughter. Um, honey, I had two of your siblings uh, eliminated so that I could raise you a little more conveniently. And even being abused by a nurse while she was in labor with Chloe. Murdering bitch whore. Um, Who said that? Uh, a nurse in, my, um, in the delivery room. Are you kidding? No. I have zero regrets. Not a single regret. So there's not a day where you don't think I could have three healthy, happy little kids running around instead of just one? No, because I had a singleton pregnancy. I had a single pregnancy like human beings are meant to have. I, I didn't have a litter. Is that how you saw it? Having triplets was like having a litter? Absolutely. Dirty little secret anymore. Shelby and Amy know by speaking out they'll cop criticism, but both believe this is about giving women choice. And half a world away in Canberra, Ali Mountfield also believes choice is important. But selective reduction will always be controversial because what some see as a blessing, others see as a burden. You wouldn't have it any other way? No. No regrets. Yeah. And I would do it again. Not, not, not have another three, but I would, if the, um, my life was re rewinded, I would go forward the same way. The moon's up with the baby. Test the water free! Test the water free!